G'day YouTube, it is the maddest man here on the Wicked GQ Patrol channel. Anyway, uh, what do I have here? This is a Holden Colorado LTZ 2018. It could be the MY19, but I'm just not entirely sure. But anyway, this is actually a hire car from uh, our good friends at Holden down here. And um, they gave me this to drive because my brand new white one is in for getting a canopy. So I thought I'd run through some of the, uh, the really good points about Holden. Um, first off, this is an LTZ. And now they normally don't come with these great big beefy sports bars at the back. But uh, this one I think was, uh, it's been beefed up by Holden um, to look more sportsy. And it looks like they've even given a lift kit. Not sure, but it looks quite high to me. Um, now, when you come across these things, or when if you're wanting to planning to buy a brand new one, you've got to ask yourself, what do you want out of your four-wheel drive utility or four-wheel drive truck? As most of these um, uh, new car or new uh, new four-wheel drives are called, they're not called um, utes anymore. They're called trucks and out of the truck sizes you can get your really old small little Hiluxes this would be classed as a medium sized truck and then a large sized truck would be something like a Silverado or a Dodge Ram so we get a lot of nice neat features nice rims uh, the factory version of side steps are plastic more uh, more than the tube looking things but this is probably a decent way to build your full drive truck and on the top we have the optional bonnet bulge which I think is found on the Z71 Extreme model but you can always ask Holden to install this onto your truck instead of standard so what do you get a 2.8 litre 147 kilowatt 500 newton metre 6 speed automatic diesel turbo now mate this thing, when you drive it, it bloody flies for its size of car in comparison with my old Mitsubishi Triton 2013 this thing will leave it at the lights for dead so anyway one of the things that it does have some would call this a feature, some would call it a, uh, a, a bad side about it is that it has a rear LSD instead of a open diff with a locker. Now, if you are driving and towing and maybe just going to the odd campsite with your family, towing your caravan in, really, do you need a locker? That is the question that I must ask because I have a 1992 Nissan Patrol at home that has an LSD and it drives up some of the most serious bloody tracks that you can imagine without lockers so really then the next question is would you want to drive this up some of the extreme tracks where you'd need lockers when it's brand new seriously i don't think so unless you want to smash up a sixty thousand dollar vehicle or up to sixty thousand dollars so in saying that i would then opt for a vehicle that has a limited slip diff instead of a e-locker or hydraulic locker or air operated locker in the rear you can always add that in later down the track when the car is a few years old and you decided to just keep it as a vehicle uh, that you enjoy for a workhorse something like this would be absolutely perfect you get all the mod cons there's a lot of accessories for this ute and inside you have a fantastic stereo system I'll open the doors here electrics everywhere just like most other cars six speed automatic which is absolutely fantastic for towing and this heavy city traffic you have a great stereo system in here I believe it has seven speakers uh, one in the center tweeters up the front 
door speakers and rear speakers. Um, you get enough storage space. Um, cup holders, I wish they'd kind of move this around a little bit so that the cup holder isn't underneath this section. But hey, maybe in the next model they'll change that. Uh, you get plenty of cigarette lighters, or cig not cigarette lighters, but cigarette points. Uh, and 12 volt power sources to plug in your USB equipment or other 12 volt stuff. An automatic dimming rear vision mirror. The stereo uh, has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, DAB, the digital air broadcast for those in the city that like to use it. Um, I find that the cluster is nice and easy to read. You can even choose to have a digital speedo readout or you can go through and read things like your fuel economy now mind you this is a rental car so who knows how people have driven it before me um, it tells you everything your fuel range you can even start up a timer your outside air temperature and you can even see your tire temp uh, pressures something very handy if uh, if you're a bit pedantic about it or if you suddenly get a flat you will get a warning message come up on your dash telling you that the tire is flat, uh, your battery voltage, coolant temperature instead of just using the upper um, gauges. Uh, one of the things um, some people say is very important is how many hours your engine has been running for. Um, transmission fluid temperature, especially if you're towing up big mountains and if you're pushing that over 90 degrees Celsius, you might want to think about an upgrade to your transmission cooler. Um, you can set up a speed warning, so if you're on a freeway and you want to set your, your maximum speed to 105, so if you're a bit of a speedster and you can set it to 105, an alarm will go off in your dash. Uh, your fuel economy, there's lots of figures there to go through. Absolutely fantastic. So and of course on your steering wheel you have your Bluetooth, your stereo controls. This is actually collision alert, a front collision alert. Uh, what that does is that a light will come up on the dashboard to tell you that there's a car in front and it'll turn orange when it thinks that you're getting a little too close. And if you get really, really close and you're not braking or slowing down, there'll be four, I believe it's four, uh, LED light shining very brightly against the window with a heads up display and it will go beep 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 all right tells you to slow down it is not active so don't think that the brakes will come on for you you will have to actually brake yourself uh, you have your cruise control which is also not active in this model um, automatic wipers headlights with daytime running lights as you've seen before from the front of the car simple to use air conditioning controls all your push buttons and everything is right there right where you want them the gearbox there's nothing fancy no fancy switches you got on the fly select to four wheel drive high you will have to stop for four wheel drive low and put it into neutral um, one little feature about these colorados if if your car doesn't have it or well my my colorado didn't i didn't know what on earth these little slots were for underneath the air conditioner they are for optional cup holders and other accessories that go into them you know, I believe you can buy cup holders mobile phone holders maybe even an air freshener that will clip into here you'd have to ask Holden there's also aftermarket gear that you can clip into there very smart so all in all a great work truck or just a family vehicle uh, that you don't want to use off road but man have a look at that bonnet bulge that is one sure thing that I'd love to have on mine. <laughs> mine is just a flat looking bonnet, but that really sets out how mean this car is. You have storage as well, glove box, normal, and also the dash in these cars is something fantastic. The actual materials that they've chosen is a softer type material in this updated model of the Colorado. So. I remember the old Colorado's being hard interiors. Even my Mitsubishi Triton is a hard to touch interiors. You also have soft touch in the doors over there. The metal strips, 
just making it look a bit more classy and this more looks more truck like when you sit in with its more square edges instead of a rounded off dashboard uh, they really have done well with the design of this dashboard I reckon um, some may not be a fan of the more square look and the more truck look um, but it's gone more towards the Ford Ranger um, if we get in the back you also have um, well, somebody's left their bags in here but you can lift up the back seats and under the back seats you have these little storage places well the other side is empty but this side has your jack and everything else in there and you can also fold down the rear seats they're 60 fold 40 I believe or maybe not I might be wrong with that uh, I, I I think I'm wrong uh, there is also the fold down um, armrests in the back there to make things more comfortable and a three-point seat belt for your rear passenger or the middle rear passenger um, I will show you one other feature which is great on the Holden Colorado LTZs and above is that we'll lock up the doors right now great looking car like I said so if we were to hold down the lock button and then push this little circle -y looking button and hold it you can remotely start your car and if the air conditioning was running previously it will automatically restart and cool your car down for up to 20 minutes depending on how you do it it will go for 10 minutes and then you can extend the time by doing the same repeated process uh, LTZs come with a factory fitted tonneau cover it's a little bit hard to use I find but it's up to you what you want to do with it a lockable tailgate it is not with, uh, fitted with the central locking though of course a reverse camera with active steering in it which is handy for knowing exactly where you're going or trying to line up your trailer etc so yes lots of uh, little features in the LTZ but I believe that the suspension in this is heightened up uh, this is not stock suspension height uh, and also the wheel foot arch flares are not standard across the LTZ range the bonnet is not standard they do not come fitted with the bonnet protector either and I believe that the black grill is not standard so there is a few things that you can change when you buy an LTZ to make it more appealing to you as well as the roof rails they're an added added extra as well um, so it depends on what you want and Holden have got a huge list of um, upgrades to your vehicle so anyway um, I've owned my white LTZ now for about a month and I've driven 2000 K's with it and so far I am more than happy with its performance with its fuel consumption I can if you drive at 100 k's an hour down a highway, you can probably reach anywhere between 900 and 1,000 kilometres per tank of around 70 to 75 litres. A very, very good fuel consumption. Anyway, that's me over and out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you wish to see any more. See ya.